Modal pushover analysis is simply based on the idea that uh, instead of uh, just like UMRHA, we, what we do, we develop or model a single degree of freedom system representing each mode. Here, instead of doing that, we perform the pushover analysis for each mode separately using its modal inertial load pattern. So we perform the first mode pushover analysis uh, using the modal inertia load pattern of first mode separately and calculate the response of first mode separately. Then we perform the pushover analysis for second mode load pattern, then third mode and we can keep on doing it for enough number of modes and calculate the response of each mode separately using pushover analysis of that mode and then combine the peak responses obtained for each mode using a statistical combination rule for example SRSS. So this is based on the idea that uh, instead of in, in non-linear time history analysis what we do we apply directly the earthquake forces uh, earthquake time history right which can be converted into the effective earthquake forces which have a random distribution along the height as well as in the time variation. So instead of doing that we use the idea of modal expansion of effective earthquake forces as explained in earlier. We use that idea and we calculate the modal inertia load pattern for each mode. So we decompose the effective earthquake forces into modal contributions and apply those as the pushover load case. Just like we apply uh, for one load pattern, here we apply for more than one load pattern, each representing a mode shape contribution. right? So for first mode, second mode, third mode, we apply those pushover load cases and perform pushover analysis separately and then combine the responses at the end using SRSS just like in the response spectrum analysis where we combine the peak responses, right? So for linear elastic systems, modal pushover analysis is similar to response spectrum analysis because in response spectrum analysis also, we apply the effective earthquake forces for each mode separately and uh, then we calculate directly the elastic response for each mode and then we combine them. Uh, so same is the idea for uh, pushover analysis but if we apply it for linear elastic systems it will become same as the classical RSA procedure. Uh, the only difference is that in RSA, since the model is linear, we directly uh, can run the analysis in one single step. But here, uh, the pushover actually is based on the idea that loading can be increased monotonically until a target displacement. But for linear elastic systems, since the model is linear, so it will become same as the RSA procedure. So in the, in the RSA, we know that for this particular equation, uh, we calculate the peak roof, uh, peak roof displacement of the system using this equation and this dn actually come from the response spectrum of uh, the earthquake. It can be the design spectrum from a particular building code for new buildings or it can be the uh, elastic response spectrum for an existing earthquake. Whatever earthquake you want to perform the analysis for, you can directly pick the dn value from that response spectrum and that can be converted into peak roof dis displacement of your system. Here, when you apply it to nonlinear systems, uh, obviously when you uh, apply it to linear systems, they, the MPA procedure will offer no advantage because it will simply become same as the RSA procedure. The actual benefit is when you apply it to nonlinear system, this one. So now uh, we use the same equation and we use the same concept of the effective earthquake forces of nth mode but instead of uh, calculating this dn from the response spectrum or determining it directly from the elastic response spectrum this dn comes from the pushover analysis so now the peak response of the inelastic system to any nth mode effective earthquake force is determined by a pushover analysis which is now a nonlinear analysis procedure when we do that, it becomes modal pushover analysis. We do it for each mode. So we apply our structure with the, uh, the 
the modal inertia load pattern S and then we calculate dn and then dn can be used in this equation to get the peak roof displacement in elastic one. We do it for each mode and then we uh, get the combined response. Now this dn actually which is the target displacement for nth mode can be obtained by uh, is actually is actually the peak deformation of the nth mode in elastic single degree of freedom system instead of the nth mode elastic single degree of freedom system as in the case of modal uh, classical modal RHA or response spectrum analysis. So this is our equation of the nth mode in elastic single degree of freedom system. Uh, this is the nonlinear force deformation behavior and we have to calculate dn from this right. So now we perform the nonlinear static analysis uh, instead of performing the dynamic analysis as in the UMRHA procedure. So we use pushover analysis procedure and then calculate dn and at this particular URN this is the roof displacement for that particular mode we extract all the responses from the pushover analysis of that particular mode we extract all the responses and those are the modal responses. So for each pushover curve we calculate URN and extract all the responses at that particular step of analysis this becomes our target displacement for each mode. So for inelastic systems one approach to calculate that dn is to solve the single degree of freedom system. Uh, this step of calculation is explaining how we can convert uh, the pushover curve VBN versus URN into FSN over LN force and DN. So the summary is that VBN for nth mode base shear and nth mode roof displacement this pushover curve is converted into force deformation curve of that particular mode which is FSN over LN on Y axis and DN on X axis. So this, these two set of equations that actually tells us how to carry out that conversion right and mn star here is this product it is the effective modal mass here. So here that conversion is explained that actually the dotted line is the actual pushover curve and it is idealized as a bilinear curve in this force deformation coordinates. Now this force deformation curve can be assigned to a single degree of freedom system and you can solve that to get the dn that single degree of freedom system can be solved against an earthquake and calculate dn and then put that in this equation to get urn and urn can be used as a target displacement for that particular mode. So once you get the target displacement for each mode you push your building using the modal inertial load pattern of that mode up to its own target displacement and extract the responses for each mode those will already be the peak responses and then you, you combine those responses using a modal combination rule for example SRSS or CQC. So this is an overview of the UMRHA procedure so I again go back to the original same slide and then extend that. So actually the next step would be to plot the pushover curve for each mode using the modal inertia load pattern of that mode then calculate the roof uh, the, then calculate the target displacement of each mode and extract the responses at that particular target displacement for each mode and then combine those responses using SRSS or CQC to get the combined inelastic force uh, inelastic responses. So here in MPA procedure you do not get the fluctuating time histories of the response of each mode. You directly get the peak response for each mode, right? So UMRHA have a benefit over MPA procedure that it provides us the fluctuating time histories for each mode also. But MPA directly give us the, the, uh, the peak responses. So UMRHA and MPA can be compared like this that uh, 
the response value r n for any nth mode which is determined by pushover analysis in the mpa procedure is the estimate of the peak value of the time history of that particular response against the effective earthquake forces of that mode so but it is not identical to another estimate determined by umrh umrh is based on different assumption mpa is based on a different assumption for elastic systems as i have explained that umrh is same as the modal rh classical modal rh and mpa procedure is same as the response spectrum analysis but for inelastic systems these two methods they become approximate they are both approximate and they are different from each other right so only the roof displacement urn is determined in both of these mpa and umrh procedures using the same expression all other responses from these two methods can be different because they are both approximate and they are based on different assumptions so the mpa procedure actually uh, the, these two mpa and umrh procedures are different because the underlying analysis involve different assumptions the umrh procedure if i repeat again it is based on the idea that we can approximately assume the mode shapes as uncoupled right and uh, we can use the same mode shapes phi n which are the mode shapes of the corresponding linear single degree of freedom system so which means that uh, uh, the the modal contributions in umrh procedures will always be proportional to the original mode shapes of the corresponding linear system but in modal pushover analysis we are calculating the modal response by applying the load pattern of that mode so which means the the building is uh, is not forced to follow a particular mode shape in mpa procedure the floor displacement of the inelastic system are no, no longer proportional to the nth mode shape as they are in case of umrh procedure so in this particular sense mpa procedure Uh, can be assumed better than the umrha procedure that it doesn't force your building to follow the uh, the particular mode shape pattern of the corresponding linear system uh, however the modal pushover analysis contain a different source of approximation which is not available in umrha in umrha we directly get the time history of each response so we directly sum them and uh, get the combined time history of the combined response so no modal combination rule is involved in umrh procedure but uh, in mpa procedure we directly get the peak responses of each mode so in order to combine them peak responses we must need a modal combination rule for example srss or cqc similar to the response spectrum analysis procedure in the linear elastic systems so this application of modal combination rule to inelastic system it lacks a rigorous theoretical basis uh, it is strictly not applicable to non linear system but it seems reasonable because the modes are only weakly coupled so for for those structures which follow this assumption or for which this assumption is reasonably valid the modal combination rule may still be okay but for some systems which are significantly yielded modal pushover analysis may not provide good estimates because because of the uncertainty involved in the modal combination rules right